got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> coconuts. Deep. There they are standing in a row. Bum, bum, big one, small one, some as big as your head. Give them a flick of... Her. No. I messed it up. What is... That's not really a song, Give them a twist, a flick of the wrist. That's what the doctor said. That is a song. But, anyway. But not with coconuts. Yes, it is. Oh. <laughs> Bring us in, babe. Welcome to Coco, Coco Caliente. Caliente. And I'm surprised I've never thought to sing that song before because it's very fitting. Yeah. Um, it's a theme. We should have it as our theme song. Yeah, we could. I think there'd be a copyright issue there, though. <laughs> Anyways, how are you doing this weekend, baby? It was a long week. My Busha passed away. Yeah, that was so very sad. We have. I've just been kind of out of uh, in a weird funk lately. I feel like crying makes my makes me really tired, and mm-hmm. I just get emotionally exhausted. So it's been a very so to down week to combat that what what have we been doing this weekend what have we been doing a lot of this weekend besides hanging with family just hanging out with each other relaxing yeah, yeah. we really haven't done that we were supposed to go to a country fest in frankenmuth we had a hotel and everything and we were really excited about it we had never been um but obviously life happens and it was uh that was a day of the funeral and stuff so we just canceled and it was much needed um to just chill out for a little bit. Yeah, no, 100%. And and the reason I say that is because scientifically, mm-hmm. and because I was looking this up because it just it was very interesting to me. I was like, well, there has to be some science behind relaxation, right? Right. And, and getting enough of that can do a lot of good for you. And they, they had did a study and like over 40% of people, mm-hmm. actually maybe even more than that, said they don't have time set aside for just relaxing. Well, what I read is if you don't pick a day for your body to relax, it'll pick it for you. And that's what happens with me. And it will be the most inconvenient day when I have the most stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So now I try to set aside a day for sure to just do nothing kind of. Yeah, no. Even like reading. For sure. And Mm -hmm. that's, and that is healthy. And I was looking at some stuff and I, and I have some stuff in front of me that I want to share with Mm -hmm. our listeners and you, Nicole, because you don't know that I was looking this up. But for example, talking about like uh, depression, right? So chronic stress can kill brain cells, right? And it can prevent the creation of new ones. Mm -hmm. And also prolong the, if you prolong the presence of that stress, Mm -hmm. it can reduce uh, that, that cortisol will reduce levels of serotonin and dopamine, which are linked to depression. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So finding that time, even, I mean, just any time that you can find, they say even a minute or two between different tasks or like on a weekend, if you can really just dial it down and like clear your mind. Like if you have a chance to maybe go to a party or, you know, you just need some time to hang out, maybe pick hang out. Yeah. And they even said like, if you, if you have stress that lasts more than a month, but like less than six months, it doubled the person's risk of catching a cold. Thing. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, no, and I caught a cold already this season. Yeah. Like a bad one. I was out for a week. Yeah, and it, it's a bunch of different well, things. Well, I know that this is true. Be- I know that even like anxiety causes dementia when you're older because mm-hmm. in nursing school when I was studying it, I have all of the risk factors for having dementia. Like s- small, a small body frame is one of them. Oh, really? And just like being stressed out all the time. Yeah. So. And I can see that, and 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 that's it's it's all really interesting because that's something we don't generally think about, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like another thing that I saw is like, for example, acne, right? Yeah. So constant levels of stress increase the amount of oil that your skin produces, yeah, which therefore gives you more acne, right? Well, yeah, that's common knowledge, I think. Well, I didn't know that. You didn't know that stress causes acne. No, I didn't know. Oh. Ooh, no, I knew that stress caused acne, but yeah. I didn't know exactly why. Oh, and why? it's because it's the oil, you know, you're producing more oil in mm-hmm. your skin because of your stress level. Yeah. Um, and also same with like uh, when you're under stress or always being under stress, it it uh, alters the way you make decisions, right? It, it's sure. harder for somebody to gauge risk when they're under stress, so mm-hmm. they make poor decisions. I um, can see that. So just mm-hmm. a bunch of things like that I, I thought was really interesting because that's something that we focused on kind of this weekend because last night we were like, what should we do? Mm-hmm. And then it was like, well, we had taken a nap and we kind of, you woke up a little bit more groggy than I did, but mm-hmm. I, I felt like doing something. But then I was like, you know, staying in is not bad at all. 
and we ended up cooking dinner. Well, I cooked you dinner. Yeah, he spoiled me this weekend. <laughs> he really took care of me. He cooked me dinner. He cooked me breakfast this morning. He, you also did a lot of other stuff. You yeah. made me tea. He made me tea for the first <laughs> time. He's never made tea before this morning. Yeah, I used a real teapot that started making a noise, started <laughs> whistling. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but, no, yeah. but yeah, so I am just here to tell people, be conscious of what you do and how you treat your body because stress is one of those things that can really take a toll on you. For sure. Another thing I was looking at mm-hmm. in my, I don't know, my... Book of facts. Book of facts, <laughs> yes. I was looking at sleep. Right. Oh, don't even look- get me started. Yes, I was looking at sleep and how much sleep we actually need, and uh, it it pretty much stays standard once you're like eighteen to like sixty five plus. What does it say? Seven to nine hours. Maybe when you get mm-hmm. older, older, seven to eight hours, but it's about seven to nine hours. When you're a teenager, it's eight to ten. Mm-hmm. So don't be surprised if your teenagers sleep in a little bit more. And when you're like six to thirteen, mm-hmm. it's nine to eleven. Yeah. I didn't think that. And obviously it just goes up and up and up. So like a newborn is like 14 to 17 hours. Yeah. So that's, I didn't know that. (laughs) You did. I honestly, I had no (laughs) idea. Uh, Uh, Yeah. Infants 12 to 15, toddlers 11 to 14, preschool 10 to 13. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just pretty interesting. Something to be conscious of. And I learned uh, other sleep facts um, for those that knew or ever listened that I, w- I worked at the mattress store, yeah. right? I was a mattress salesman. So I was always looking up sleep facts. And one of the things that I thought that was interesting is like you used to work at the at the emergency room, mm-hmm. right? You worked in the ER. So you mm-hmm. had crazy hours sometimes, mm-hmm. right? And so then when people that work night shift, when they finally get a chance to sleep, they say, I'm going to quote unquote catch up on sleep. Yeah, you can't catch up. You can't catch up. It's a <laughs> fallacy. It's not a thing. You're just sleeping. Mm-hmm. There's no way for you to say, oh, well, I only slept four hours. So now I got to sleep the mm-hmm. seven plus the four so I can get back up to my normal. It's like, no, you're just going to have to sleep that seven. And that'll bring you back. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is kind of crazy it how, how mm-hmm. that thought process or same with like, oh, I work night shift. And Mm -hmm. so I've trained my body to be on that sleep cycle, which is also not true. Yeah, no. It the I think I said this before on the podcast. An ER doc I worked with, um, he told me it was me working night shift was like smoking two packs a day. Isn't that crazy? And so I was like, I need to get out of (laughs) here because I was the type that couldn't eat at Mm -hmm. night. It was weird. I get like gut rot. And so I lost a lot of weight. I um I had to take like Z Quill every day to oh, sleep. Oh, that's horrible. And it was just like so I was losing weight. I was having to take Z Quill. I felt like a zombie. Mm-hmm. And when I was up all night, I just felt like pure crap. I think some people handle it better than others. I yeah. do think cuz I see some nurses thrive on night shift. But and you do get an extra couple dollars an hour even though it's slower because of the harm to your body. Yeah. So I was just kind of like needing an out and I got out. <laughs> yeah. And does it, is it worth it in the long run? You right. know what I mean? Like, is, I know. and it's typically like, especially if you're younger, you probably can sustain it better, but mm-hmm. is it sustainable over a long period of time? Right. And can you like trace back, like when you're older, any adverse health, you know, yeah. effects that you have at that time when you're older, can you trace that back to when you were younger doing that stuff? Mm-hmm. So Thrive Cosmetics is a beauty brand that I have used for a while. And I actually, ironically, first tried it in a FabFit Fun Box. I had like this highlighter that went around my eyes. So it goes under my brow bone and it just made my eyes kind of pop. It was like a halo light for your eyes. Well, then they started to pop up on my... um, what is Instagram Instagram. feed (laughs) and so then I got the setting powder that makes your face look so not oily so I put all my makeup on and then it's like a setting powder and it makes it look super good like not shiny or anything like that um and they're leaping bunny certified their pita is like very for them you yeah can, they're vegan and cruelty yeah, free yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. so um what else Vic? Uh, well i like the fact that they give back mm-hmm. so for every product purchase they donate to help women who are in need so that could be emerging from homelessness surviving domestic abuse and even fighting cancer yeah no so they're a great company they have effective products they give back they're vegan and cruelty free and then you can also do an auto replenishment if that's something you're interested in i love the products that i use and if you want to try it um, you can get 15% off if you use 
the code COCO. So go to thrivecosmetics.com slash COCO for 15% off your first purchase. <laughs> That's Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E-C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash COCO for 15% off your first purchase. Thrivecosmetics.com slash COCO. Let me know what you guys get because I need to know what else is good. <laughs> <laughs> And nurses have a, like, they don't take care of themselves. It's kind of shown because they put, I think it's because they put others before themselves. And mm-hmm. that's kind of what people say. But nurses tend to be super unhealthy because we are, you barely have time to pee in a 12 hour shift. So you're not drinking water. Yeah. You're not eating right. You're just like, I don't know. It, it, my health was declining as being a night shift ER nurse. Which and that's is insane. Kinda, yeah. Because, I mean, I should be setting an example and, Oh heck no! <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And even with like uh, doctors when they're when they're in their residencies, yeah. especially, mm-hmm. and they're working, you know, constant twelve hour, twelve hour, twelve hour. You know, they trying to rack 24 up twenty four hours. Yeah, in our or twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so insane. by the time their shift was ending, I mean, your brain just is not functioning how it should be functioning mm-hmm. and making those decisions, life and death decisions for somebody else. I couldn't do it. I couldn't put myself in that situation because I get foggy after my 12 and a half hour shift. And I was listening to another podcast talking about something like that, Experts on Experts. And mm-hmm. they, and Dax asked, you know, why do these doctors, you know, is that just like something, a standard that was set that they right. have to work that many hours? Mm-hmm. Or is there some type of requirement or something like that? And they're like, well, no, it's just something that's been like that, almost like a rite of passage type of deal. And, you know, but who would yeah. want to go, like, if you got shot at like four in the morning mm-hmm. and you go into the hospital and that doctor's been up for the last, you know, 23 hours mm-hmm. and now he has to make, you know, he's the one and doing they surgery. they all do so well. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> incredible seeing them work because never have I thought, wow, this doctor's tired. Mm-hmm. Like they don't show it. I don't know what they, they've gone through some crap because- It has to be like some type of boost of adrenaline that they yeah. get. Like when somebody comes through the door like that in you know, such a critical state. And at, I don't know if all doctor or all ERs are 24 hours. Hopefully some are 12 and 12. I'm sure they are in the bigger cities because of the workload, mm-hmm. but they would have a sleep room and then we would just call them, but yeah. they really would get like a half hour. We'd call them down, go back up, maybe get an hour, call them down. That can be almost worse sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know how they do it. I, I really don't. Well, we're here to tell you. That was just my tidbit to give you guys. Like, Just make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're getting the proper amount of sleep. Make sure you're dialing it down mm-hmm. after you have a bunch of stress. I mean, stress comes from everywhere, even you know, driving to work Sometimes or coming back Sometimes there's nothing home. you can do about it. Like the loss of someone in your family that you love, mm-hmm. that's like something you can't really avoid or stop thinking about. But what, I've, what I'm doing now and trying to start Monday is back to the basics, like a checklist, okay? Because honestly, sometimes you forget to do the basics, like brush your teeth twice a day. Okay, (laughs) I'll admit, sometimes I skip at night or I'll fall asleep. I want to read before bed. The last week and a half, I had been reading instead of binge watching Netflix shows and it helps me sleep a lot better because I'm not... Something about obviously being on technology makes Mm -hmm. makes you want to stay up. And it has expanded your vocabulary. Yeah, because I beat him in some, uh, what was it? Anagrams. Anagrams. I kicked his ass. (laughs) Anyway, so like little things like that. I'm going to try doing a juice once a day, even though it's a lot of work. I'm going to try just cleansing my body, doing my skincare routine because I hadn't done my skincare routine for the last week. And then I found myself having a bunch of breakouts. So it's just like that little self-care thing can make a huge difference. And I think you just hit literally mind, body, and soul. So all those things together mm-hmm. give you a healthy life. And trying to exercise for... Right now I only exercise for 30 minutes twice a week in a class. I want to try to do it more than... Because those two days I feel really good. I just need to get... I just need someone to boss me around. And the guests <laughs> that we have today are mm-hmm. going to highlight the fact that mm-hmm. even if it's 
one time, half an hour yeah. a week, and that's where you start at, mm-hmm. you know, that's better than not doing anything. Exactly. So, yeah, we have uh, uh, the couple from uh, the podcast, We Only Look Thin. Mm-hmm. They're going to be our guests today. An amazing couple, yes. very interesting, and they mm-hmm. can give you good insight for the people that don't know where to start in exercising and working out, and maybe not like me where I'm, you know, all gun ho on exercising all the time and I already have my stuff in place. They can help you change your mindset to sh- exactly. like show that little things do matter. Mm-hmm. Just because you eat one candy bar in one day doesn't mean your whole week is screwed up. Yeah. That's like my mindset. But after like listening to them. Yeah. I have one candy bar. Oh, it's downhill. Let me have some chips now. Might as well <laughs> yeah. have a pizza. Yeah. Or just like they said, walking to the mailbox. Mm-hmm. That's a start, right? Mm-hmm. You start walking to mailbox. Don't drive up, you know, when you get home and put the window down and just mm-hmm. grab it, you know, like little things like that. Very interesting couple. Mm-hmm. I think you guys will enjoy it. And, and uh, yeah. So welcome to Coco Caliente. Uh, she's the Coco to my Caliente, hence the name. Um, Hello. And we have some interesting, fun guests uh, from what I've seen so far. I've yeah. heard uh, Catherine and Donald. So thank you guys so much for being here. With us. Thank you so much yeah. for having us. We're yeah, enjoying we're, uh, your show. We're uh, yes, we've been listening to your show, and oh, uh, nice. <laughs> we are uh, we are giant, amazing race fans. I've seen every uh, every season. So, oh really? Um, That's yeah, cool. Even even before we knew we were going to be on, we've been rooting for you. So, oh, thanks. Oh. That's cool. <laughs> the irony. <Yeah>. The irony. <laughs> well, and I'm I'm fairly certain because we're uh, we're fans of the show that we might. Uh, kill each other on the show where we love each other passionately. We've been married for 21 years, but we played chess against one another once about <laughs> 18 years ago. And it was like, yeah, call the divorce again. lawyer. No, so, <laughs> we have been, we've been watching the show and going, gosh, they, they get along really well. They're complimentary of one another. They don't yell at each other. So it's been great to see your gameplay. Well, and that's because we're on the same team. Like when we're playing games at home against each she other, flips the board. it's she ugly. Flips it. <laughs> if you have another Another one. If you have another wild card, I'm. I quit. I quit. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, but no, I, I came across uh, your guys's podcast and thought the story was really interesting. You know, you each lost a hundred. Well, ninety eight is it? But roughly about a hundred uh, pounds. Like a hundred right? and ish. And I'm yeah. at a, about a hundred and fifty. Yeah. Yeah. That and that's just remarkable and mm-hmm. and and doing it in a way that's not like the extremes like you guys say um cuz you we all see the shows like biggest loser and stuff and and just statistically speaking losing weight like that is not healthy uh They're hard to keep off and and hard to keep off yeah 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 it's sort of you know people people try and lose weight in a, in a really quick fashion like for a particular event or something mm-hmm. and and as soon as that event comes they don't make a plan for what they're going to do after. Like, what do you do the day after you get to that event? And, um, and, you know, we did that for most of our lives, you know? And we sat on this very couch for uh, many, (laughs) many years going, gosh, if we could just go on Survivor and like not be able to eat for a month. (laughs) Or or even, you know, just biggest loser going, gosh, if if only I could work out 10 hours a day and throw up on a treadmill, then I could be in shape. Yeah. Or, and I know, I know you said, you know, you got to the big brother house and ordinarily you would work out all the time, uh, Victor, and you got there and you just didn't want to. And, you know, there was, this part of me that was like, well, if only I could just be trapped in a house and have nothing to do but work out. Yeah, it must out, be nice like, to I be would, trapped. <laughs> everything would, would be fine. Yeah, it must be nice. Um, and, you know, it, it was really this sort of uh, wake-up call of there is no finish line was, mm-hmm. was, you know, we heard that from another podcast, a woman named Heather Robertson, uh, Half Size Me. And um, it, it was like this this epiphany, you know, it's not, there's, there's, you don't go on a diet. You have to change your lifestyle and yeah. you have to, you have to do it in a way that is sustainable for the rest of your life. Otherwise you're just going to go on a diet. And then the second the diet's over, you gain all the weight back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And, and I think that's absolutely true. I used to personal train people and that was my thing all the time. You know, like it's not, you can't just do this for 30 days and think the challenge is over. You know, it's, it's your lifestyle and, and not doing the extremes is the best way to go. 
Uh, I love Beta Brands pants. Always. Because they're super comfortable. They look like they're yoga pants, dress pants. Yes, that's and... I, that's my favorite part of it. And that, you know what? If I was a girl, this would be the only pant that I wear because apparently they're so comfortable. And I know what they look like because I see them on you. They look really good. Yeah, they're super comfy. They're stretchy. They stay wrinkle free. There's tons of designs, tons of cuts. If you like white leg, White leg, <laughs> wide leg, <laughs> <laughs> wide leg, yeah. wide leg cropped. Um, there's six button, there's straight leg, there's boot cut. There's so many. And I they have this- like dozens of colors, patterns, cuts, and styles, including a pair with eight pockets. Yeah. So if you need somewhere to put your Holy stuff. Holy pockets. Yeah. <laughs> Not only has Beta, Beta brand revolutionized office wear, but they now offer premium denim with the same flexibility and comfort as yoga pants. Uh, you got to try that because I, I am very to- intrigued about that. Yeah. Because most of my pants, like, you know, dress pants are just kind of like tight and uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. these are definitely comfortable and they look really good. So you've got to try a pair of these pants from Beta brand. Trust me, you'll love them. Mm-hmm. And you'll get 20% off at betabrand.com slash coco that's betabrand.com slash coco for 20 percent off b-e-t-a-b-r-a-n-d.com slash coco see for yourself why millions of women agree these are the most comfortable dress pants ever I just want to, you know, people listening may not have heard your podcast or know your story so I just want to start kind of at the beginning uh, with you Catherine because You've been having, I guess, this kind of thing since like fifth grade, and oh, earlier than that, yeah. I um, hi, I'm Catherine. I'm, uh, <laughs> um, I had my first binge when I was about four years old. I tricked my parents into leaving the house so that I could get a gallon of milk and the Nesquik and just like mixologist for the afternoon, wow. and. Uh, and uh, I don't know, back then, parents didn't really pay attention to, like, my parents didn't pay attention to what I was eating. They didn't notice, like, the powdered Nesquik stain on my bureau, like, evidence um, never called me on it. And uh, they were kind of couch potatoes. And um, I dealt with a lot of my emotional eating, uh, you know, just trying to stay out of the way. I didn't want to get in the way of my family. So I turned to food. And food is delicious. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know that. <laughs> Yeah, food food is one of my favorite things to eat, really. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But uh, so I, you know, was overweight in elementary school and then middle school, and I dealt with um, secret eating. I dealt with bulimia, and uh, you know, was kind of I wasn't really that overweight, but you know, compared to my schoolmates, I was, and so I zigzagged up and down the scale, and. you know, had a boyfriend who would always compare me to women, you know, who are five inches shorter than I was. And I, so I was just always super self-conscious. Um, and then at age 18, I met Donald Hi. and he loved me. <laughs> just, he loved me just as I was. And that seemed very foreign to me. I wasn't used to <laughs> unconditional love. And, um, but, uh, so we met and I, was working full time. He was working full time. And as you do in a new relationship, you go out to eat and you get takeout and the activity level that you have maybe in high school or college goes away. And then suddenly you're just cozy on the couch and uh, started working full time and going out for 1500 calorie uh, cheesecake lunches, you know, cheesecake factory lunches every day. (laughs) And started going to school full time, and magically, I don't know how it happened. I got up to three hundred pounds. Uh, wow. It 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 didn't seem fair. It seemed like all of my colleagues were eating big lunches. Uh, yeah, it, you know, and we just were like, oh well, you know, if I didn't work full time, I could lose weight. If I wasn't going to school full time, I could lose weight. If only, you know, we had a different lifestyle. And it, I spent twenty years like zigzagging up and down the scale. I did uh, Atkins and lost about 115 pounds. Wow. And I sent an email to my family saying, like, I'm fixed. I did it. I've mm-hmm. cured weight. Like, I'm done forever. And then I turned around and then just started eating all the same food again. And I saw it as a finish line. Like, I thought fit, thin people just hit a finish line and then they got and to eat pizza. And then you get pizza. to eat whatever you want. Yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> So I negotiated with my weight for 20 years. I mean, and Donald did too. I mean, we went up and down the scale uh, trying to get thin, quick schemes. Yeah, and and we we enabled each other's bad behavior too. You know, one one of us would try and get hardcore for a little bit. And then the other one would be like, hey, come on, let's get takeout. And I could never resist. You know, it Mm -hmm. was just always this, this vicious cycle of, you know, continuing to go up and up and down. That's super relatable. I feel like we do that even when... 
Like, um, he gets on his gym binges and I'm not a gym person. (laughs) So I'm just like, oh, like I know I can't maintain the gym forever, but I like to be active. But like we he'll do right now he's doing gym twice a day. And so then sometimes I'll be like after church, like, oh, let's go to China King. We always go to China King. And then he says, yes. (laughs) And then it's like, okay, I'll start tomorrow. And oh my gosh, like, I feel like I go through this all the time. And it's only like, two pounds and five pounds and then I'll lose two pounds. And I'm like, okay, now I'm good again. And then I'll gain five pounds. And oh my gosh. And I, then we hit a weekend like, you know, you're out at the campground eating brats and, and drinking a bunch of beer and, and doing all this things that aren't healthy. And then today I was like, okay, back on my gym grind, you know, back on the shakes, back on the exercising twice a day. Uh, but it's... Well, well, and I think too, I mean, going back to like the two pound gain or the five pound gain or mm-hmm. the weekend gain, for me, it would be like, it's Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. We you know, we overdid it. You know what? Let's start Labor Day. Labor mm-hmm. Day will get back on track. And so it wouldn't just be a weekend. Yeah, and then suddenly it's all summer that we're eating broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait until the Y2K thing is over and then we'll figure it out. Like we don't even know if we're going to last. So yeah. we made so many excuses for, you know, it would go like six months a year before we would re- rein it in or my pant size would go up and I go like, oh no, my jeans shrunk. Like, why am I this size? Who knows? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's, uh, you know, Levi's are against me. It's not that I'm eating, <laughs> yeah. you know, Pop-Tarts all day and sitting in an office. And so I think having that, I think we're much better now at that small window of mm-hmm. indulgence and then Mm-hmm. turning it back around because it's not like you're, you know, this perfect person who just eats kale all the time. It's right. it's about finding that balance. And we we didn't think there was a balance. We just thought we were gonna No, be fixed. like I, I thought that I thought that either I could eat whatever I wanted or I had to eat twelve hundred calories a day and, you know, mm-hmm. go to the gym six days a week. I didn't think there was a happy medium. And it was the realization that there there was a happy medium that there was you know i that i could eat a reasonable amount of food and still like i eat dessert every day like i still mm-hmm. squeeze it in but i just make sure that it fits within my calories it's all about you know portion control yeah and and i have not you know no offense to personal trainers i haven't been to a gym in 3 years you yeah. know i i just we walk you know i have a fitbit and um, I started with a very you know low step count. Didn't realize how sedentary I really was, and then just you know gently increased that to the point where I'm now doing about twenty thousand steps a day. That's my goal, at least. And um, but I don't think you have to even do that much to lose weight. Like I yeah. started losing the weight. You know, it's just a quarter pound at a time, half a pound at a time. Um, you know, over the period of a couple of years until eventually I hit my goal weight. And, and it's, I just made it a part of my life. I established habits that are now just a part of my life. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm able to eat things that I still really enjoy, but I just, you know, I watch the portions, I count my calories. Yeah. I know you guys have definitely had to have heard of the Fab Fit Fun Box. Fab Fit Fun. Well, it's on sale right now, the items that you love the most. And I've been using, I loved the fall box so much. And my mom gets it. My grandma gets it. We all get it. It's like getting a present (laughs) four times a year for every single season. And to Um, be fair, they would get it regardless if you were promoting it or not. Oh, Especially at this point. (laughs) Maybe at first they got it because of that, but now they're like, all right, I I love the box. (laughs) Yeah, they've been getting it for years. I mean, they could have canceled if they're not liking it, right? (laughs) Yeah. Um, So they're full-size premium beauty lifestyle fit fitness, home, wellness products. They're sent straight to your door. And basically it's like lots of, I don't know if it's 200 or $300 worth of stuff and you get it for way cheaper. And it's things that I would have never tried because, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to try this $50 yeah. thing. But now it's like, that's what I, that's the eyeliner I use now because I found it through the box. I think it's really cool that they do the full sized items, not like a bunch of sample size things right, in a box, right. you know, like that, the fact that you get a full size trial mm-hmm. of it. And yeah, it's a, it's a $200 value over a $200 value. Of and things now in the they box. let you customize them. So if there's something you're really wanting, um, you can pick that. So that's actually something that's super cool because say you want a scarf do you want a scarf or do you want a cutting board well you might have a preference where i like to be kind of surprised i'm like what am i gonna get yeah um i still wear the scarf from last fall box all the time i see (laughs) everyone wearing it to be honest but it's so cozy 
Um, so if you, this is a seasonal subscription box with full size beauty, fitness, fashion, lifestyle products. It retails for forty nine ninety nine, but it has a value of over 200. Yeah. So I was pretty close. Use coupon code Caliente. That's spelled C-A-L-I-E-N-T-E for $10 off your first box at www.fabfitfun.com. Again, that's the code Caliente, C-A-L-I-E-N-T-E, for $10 off your first box at www.fatfitfun.com. Enjoy. You'll love it. You got to a point, Donald, if I'm not mistaken, that you were just fed up with it all. And you're like, I'm just going to gain as, you know, get as heavy as I can. And then yeah. what Mission happened? accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I had just decided that I was done. I was finished dieting. I was finished watching what I eat, exercising, any of it. And I just decided I was going to eat whatever I wanted. And then um, I went to, did a routine checkup with my doctor and he was like, guess what? You have diabetes. You have type two diabetes. Wow. And you know, it just put the brakes on. It was like the old record scratch sound. Like suddenly I was yeah. like, oh, that probably was a bad idea. You know, and at age 18, you know, when we met at age 23, when we, when I got married or when we both got married, I was 23, <laughs> he was a little older, but it's, it's kind of a game. It's like, ah, oh, you know, all those, you know, problems that old people have, your parents have, your grandparents have, it's always off in the distance and you don't think it's going to be you. And a lot of weight was vanity for me, you know, whether I was, um, you know, attractive or getting, losing weight to go to a wedding or something like that. And you think about more of the aesthetics of it, Mm -hmm. but having him go like, guess what? You could lose a leg. Like, party's over, (laughs) My doctor looked me in the eye and he's like, if you don't do something, you're, you know, you could go blind, you could lose a limb. Like these are things that happen to people with diabetes. And that scared me straight. And okay. thankfully, you know, Catherine can tell this part of it, but thankfully a few months before that time, she had sort of hit rock bottom and had had started to pull herself out. And and this this sort of phrase, you know, I, I just thought my life was over. I thought, you know, oh, I have to go immediately to this 1,200 calorie a day misery that I had experienced before whenever I had tried to lose weight. And she said to me, why don't you just start with a five-minute walk? Like, That's you know, not going to do anything. Why should I even bother? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that was my reaction. But it, it, you know, it slowly started to realize that all of it counts. Like, you know, all of these walking up the stairs instead of taking the elevator counts. Like that's exercise. It burns calories. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be this grueling, you know, intense, you know, I want to be an underwear model type of exercise in order to work. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. And and I agree with you guys. I mean, the most basic formula is, you know, burn more calories than you're eating, you know, and, and healthy people think that, oh, I lost five pounds in a week. Like that's not healthy. That's not, that's too much, you know, and, and, and and it's hard to sustain that over a long period of time, realistically. For sure. And I definitely, you know, I, I kind of joke about it on our podcast. Like I tried to lose 20 pounds quickly for 20 years, you know, and it's like, Mm -hmm. what would have happened if I had just, if we had just built in a morning walk every day? What if we just limited our alcohol consumption to Saturday nights? What if we had just, Mm -hmm. you know, if we go out to eat, what if we share an entree? Like that seemed foreign. Like I wanted my value out of like, I'm going out to eat. I got to get the big, you know, the big portion. And now we kind of gamify it where we're like, okay, what can we share? What can we skip? You know what? Just going to the movies, you don't have to get, you know, a a giant tub of soda and a popcorn. And we used to live in a world where that was the normal and it seemed strange to have like, oh my gosh, why are they sharing an entree? Like, who does that? Yeah, yeah. Are they poor? Like, no. (laughs) (laughs) And, but it took us, I mean, I was 41 until I kind of woke up and it's it's scary to think at how many years we spent negotiating with our weights negotiating with our health thinking we didn't have time and all we had was time like we we actually um adopted our daughter 5 years ago yeah um and it was kind of under a, a stressful situation uh it's wonderful she's she's a delightful 13 year old uh, <laughs> But, magical age, magical. But I kind of thought like, oh, well, you know, now that we're going to be parents, I just won't have time to eat. 
like I'll just be so busy running her around. And it turned out that was just another plate of food. If she didn't finish her grilled cheese, guess who got to eat it? I did. Yeah. Like, and I, I wanted to create a wonderful life for her. She was eight years old um, at the time. And I wanted to create this like Mary Poppins perfect world for her. And meanwhile, I would be like secret eating in the kitchen while I was making like a cute caterpillar, uh, you know, a cucumber sandwich for her. Mm-hmm. But I was just... I was losing myself in trying to create a great life for her. And Donald works in the movie business and he was working, you know, 14 hours a day. So I'm on, you know, when we're filming, I'm on set 12 to 14 hours a day, five days a week. And there's free food everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Yes. It's just all over the place. I don't know how they get any work done. They're just like throwing burritos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and actors and directors will will make these really nice gestures and get like beignet trucks. Literally. And, you know, and, and it's like, I, I just, that stuff, I just, I bring my own food to work now. And that seems crazy to a lot of people, but it's, it's, you know, what I have to do to, in, in order to know exactly what I'm eating. And, but I've just adjusted to it. And it's just something that I do all of the time. But, you know, back uh, five years ago, uh, I think this was probably January of 20, no, January of 2016, I kind of started out, but I'd gotten to the point where we were giving so much to our daughter and I was compromising so much and working so much and trying to act like everything was normal, like suddenly becoming the parent to an eight-year-old. Like I didn't take any time off. I was just like, no, I've got all this. It'll be fine. Like this is, this is how I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be too stressed to eat. And then I just ate and drank and, Mm -hmm. you know, tried to soothe myself with food. And, um, I had lost, you know, weight up and down the scale so many times and I'd gotten up to about 250 pounds and I was 41 years old. And, um, I just hit a point. I think we, we went away to Napa for the weekend, uh, when, uh, you know, we, my, her grandparents were watching her and we came home and I was just like, I could not button my pants to go to work. Like, could not button my largest pair of pants. And I wore this like giant sweater kind of to cover. And I was like, okay, if my pants rip, at least I'll have a sweater that covers it. And I'm like, what am I doing right now? Like how, how am I uh, modeling good behavior for our daughter? How am I modeling being an adult? Like who eats behind a cabinet while their daughter is like in the other room watching TV? Like who am I and what am I showing for her? And I got to this rock bottom place where I just was like, I have to do something different. Like I cannot continue my life like this. And I remember I had just found out about podcasts. Yay, podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> um, for podcasts. But I was like, all the gimmicks I've tried, all the get thin quick, all the, you know, all the quick fixes and the detoxes and the the opinions of others. I was like, there has got to be a voice out there that is stronger than mine. Right now, I am so depressed and so despondent. I need someone else's voice in my head. And so I did a little search for weight loss podcasts. And um, I found, you know, I I sort of auditioned a few of them. There were some uh, that were way too glossy for me and felt out of reach. And then there was uh, one that I found called the Half Size Meat Podcast. And the host had lost about 170 pounds. And she had started interviewing people on their weight loss journey. And um, over time, it's not like you listen to one episode and then you finally are like, I get it. Yeah. But listening to other stories of people who did secret eating, bulimia, you know, uh, who took on family drama as their own and used food to self-soothe. Mm-hmm. Over the progress of listening to this podcast, I was like, that is me. Like, I had no idea... I was an emotional eater. Like every time there was work stress or personal stress, I would turn to food. And so building up skills over time to realize like, instead of eating when I'm stressed, go for a five minute walk. Like food is not Mm -hmm. the answer. And I started counting calories and I started walking with my Fitbit. And at the beginning for the first three months, uh, Donald wanted nothing to do with it. No, really? Uh, I, oh yeah, I was in my place of of I'm not doing any of this. I'm just going to gain as much weight as I gain. I'm going to eat whatever I want and do nothing. But and I, you know, this was right before the diabetes diagnosis. Yeah, uh, but I had to do it for myself. Like I was no. It's like putting on your own life jacket. I was no service as a wife. I was you know as an employee, as a as a mother, as a friend. I needed to start focusing on myself and really going like, this isn't going to end. I can't keep going back on this treadmill. And um, so I was counting calories and I was, you know, losing a little bit of weight. And I was like, hey, Donald, 
what if instead of driving the quarter of a block to our daughter's school, what if we drove? Mm-hmm. Like, wh- or what if we didn't? Yeah, <laughs> what if we instead, instead, of, of, driving. instead of driving? Yeah, we, we have a, also have a shopping center that is, um, it's about a quarter mile. It's, it's like about a, 700 steps. Yeah, it's like 700 steps from, from where we live. And we used to get in the car, drive over there, circle the parking lot looking for a spot, park, get in, go to the Rite Aid, like get what we needed, get back in the car. And, you know, it's it's just those little things. Now it's like the idea of driving over there is insane. You know, we, <laughs> we walk, you know, all the time now. And, well, and it just, it just, those little changes have, have added up. Well, and they, people, people joke, like nobody walks in Los Angeles, you know, you drive everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, let's just walk her to school and walk her back. Okay, and then let's build up from there. And it wasn't the suddenly like, you know, insane, you know, because we've worked out with personal trainers, we've gone to gyms and like me, like um, it never, Nicole, it never stuck with me. Like a gym was Mm -hmm. never my my thing that I wanted to do, but I felt like if I wanted to lose weight, I had to go to a gym because that's Mm -hmm. what you do. And I was like, you know what? I love walking and I love listening to podcasts. And that's what I can do right now with the the life that I have as a mother, as a a full-time employee. That's what I could could do. And so then Donald uh, reluctantly joined me. Yeah, very reluctantly. And then (laughs) reluctantly got diabetes. (laughs) (laughs) And... but. Also very reluctantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that's the thing with gyms, like you were saying as well. I used to I used to be like an operations manager at a gym, and people just automatically have this idea that if I go, just being there, I lose weight. But right. nine times out of ten, I'd see people go in there, do like a five minute or ten minute treadmill walk, and then just walk right out and not do anything or just be on their phone while they're doing a machine without yeah. even breaking a sweat or you know taking the picture on the gym and then leaving and it's like <laughs> just just being at the gym doesn't make you lose the weight you know what i mean it, you, you have to yeah. do something over time and more than like 5 minutes of worth right. you know uh, so it was just it was just something for me that's like you're right you don't need a gym the best workouts are done just with yourself well, and I think too, I mean, I know you guys live in a pretty rural area, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you you have to, whatever situation you're in, whether you're single, where you're married, whatever your circumstance, figuring out what you can do, not saying like, well, I can't get up early and I can't go to the gym and there's no this around me and there's no that and I can't, what can you do? Okay. You know what? Right now the weather's great. I can walk. You know what? There's, you know, there are online resources. I can do a fitness martial video and dance for five minutes. Like finding what you can do and focusing on the can instead of the can't because I spent 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do that. I don't do that. I can't, I can't afford a, you know. Yeah. And just looking at other people and being like, boy, it must be nice to be able to, you know, have that kind of time. It must be nice to be able to do what they're doing. And instead of realizing that there were things that we can do, um, you know, and it's like, I don't, I don't enjoy going to the gym, but I do enjoy going on walks. And I, you know, it's been this really nice thing for Catherine and I too, as a, as a bonus that, I didn't, I never even thought about, you know, we are able to, our morning walks, we're able to really talk and, and hash out the day and make plans and, and, you know, really sort of unload on each other, uh, things that have happened at work. And, and it's been this really nice, like reconnection after, you know, 20 years of marriage that, that is an added bonus to it. And, And, you know, know, that's cool. I think that that finding something that you actually enjoy is really the key to continuing to do exercise. You know, if, if you hate something, you're eventually going to stop doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can't stand doing the Stairmaster, then you're going to eventually quit. And so finding that something that I actually like doing has been a big key to the whole thing. For sure. Because we should think it needed to be painful. And it, you know, not that we don't have to compromise and give things up, but like, it's about adding to your life. It's about, you know, as you get older, seeing our parents get older, we want to be able to get off the couch. We want to be able to go upstairs. We want to be able to go to Disney World and walk 30,000 steps in a day and not be winded. Like all of those are the real life benefits of, you know, it's not just about gains, as they say. It's about like actual functioning, like being able to, you know, to outrun, you know, people our age and outfit them and be like, gosh, like everybody else is slowing down and we're just getting faster. And it feels great to have like repossessed ourselves like that. As yeah, a yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the new suitcase that Victor and I just received is from Away and they're 
It's so many different styles, colors. There's even two sizes of the carry-on and two materials. So we went with the bigger carry-on because I obviously always overpack and I like to not check a bag if I don't have to. And with this bigger carry-on, so it's sized up to make the most of the overhead bin. It's lightweight. It's durable. There's a 100-day trial that you can send it back. And if you don't like it, no ifs, ands, or buts. There's also a built-in compression pad to help you pack more in. There is 360 spinner wheels, TSA-approved combination locks, an optional injectable battery to keep your phone charged, and also a removable laundry bag to separate dirty clothes from clean clothes, which that's something Vic would use. I really don't care. Um, But they are designed to last a lifetime. If your suitcase breaks, they will have it replaced ASAP, which I find is super cool because I've had so many suitcases bust with the harder shell with them just being tossed all over the place. So this way you get a free replacement ASAP. Um, in We Love Ours, I picked pink. It's like a blush pink. Victor isn't super excited about it, but I like when it comes off... Um, Sometimes when they make you check them on the plane too, I like to be able to know which my suitcase is. So I like to pick weird colors and you can also, they customize them with hand painting, which is awesome. Definitely want to do something like that in the future. So for $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash COCO and use promo code COCO COCO during checkout. Again, for $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com forward slash COCO and use promo code COCO during checkout. Uh, at one point, uh, you know, when I was really into, I was really into my fitness, I was training people. So I was in the gym, like, you know, six hours a day or whatever. And I had a meal plan that was sponsoring me. And that's when I got the most in shape, but it was just aesthetically. Cause then if I went to go run on a soccer field or something, I'd be winded in the first lap. And it's like, I'm not in functional shape. <laughs> I'm in just like aesthetic muscle shape. It's two very different things. But yeah, I, I'm just in aesthetic shape too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, I, but, I, aesthetic. but I think, I mean, we, we have always been sedentary people. I was always the kid picked last. I was, uh, you know, I never ha- had, um, you know, someone in my life who was fit, who I could emulate, you mm-hmm. know, it just wasn't part of my life. And, um, you know, I know Donald, uh, participated in, you know, uh, baseball and yeah, stuff. I played when baseball he was... as a kid, but you know, I, I was, I've always had issues with my weight though, even then. Yeah. But, you know, coming from a sedentary background and seeing people who are super, super fit and yeah. being like, I could never be like that. Like, that's just not where my life is right now. And we wasted a lot of time just saying, well, if we can't be Jillian Michaels, why should we even bother? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> It's like, well, what can we do? You know what? We can do, I can do 10 push ups in the morning at home. Like, I have time for that. We have time to walk our daughter to school. And you can add things as you go. There's no, if someone loves the gym, go to the gym. If someone loves swimming, swim. If someone loves tango, Basketball, dance. Basketball, like, you know, uh, frisbee golf, like, you know, something that just that you enjoy, uh, softball, whatever, you know, get, you know, get out there. You know, we, we have this notion in our, our minds, a lot of us, that if we can't be our perfect weight, then why should we bother? And yeah. as I approach age 50, you know, I know that my underwear model career is not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and But just being a healthy weight and just feeling so much better than I did a hundred pounds ago is, is really the benefit of this. Yeah. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to attract anybody. I'm not trying He's to. He's already done that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's, for, that's, that's true. And, and It is true because I'm an all or nothing person. So every day I wake up and I'm just like, okay, is today going to be a day I'm going to be really good or really bad? And that's, that's like kind of how I, cause I eat a lot of food for my size it's crazy. And so, I mean, everyone jokes at the family functions because they just don't know how I'm like, you know, still this size kind of thing. Cause they're like, well, she's loved food her whole life, but then I'll be really extreme or really bad. And I don't, I don't like that because what if I'm like really bad for a certain amount of time yeah. and then I have to kick it back into gear. So I, I think after my first big brother, I lost like 10 pounds or something. And that's significant on a five, two person. And so I was like, okay, I'm good. And then I've been maintaining that since. And then heartbreak is like the best diet, which that's, but it's the worst, you know, (laughs) but then I lost more weight and now I'm just like starting to get it back on, but I'm blaming it on like, um, like 
I'm not feeling good. I'm like, okay, I'm having anxiety, so I'll eat or, you know, so I need to really get back into it. And it's just, it's really hard because like I'm relating to so much. You're just kind of like, and if I can't be, I mean, I'm on Instagram and stuff, but I can't be an Instagram model. Like that's, I'm never going to go to the gym twice a day. I'm never going to post those workout videos. So what's the point? Like, I'm just going to embrace who I am, but I'm not like, I haven't worn a two piece bathing suit. And that's like people, my mom thinks I'm crazy. Like people look at me like, you're like 110 pounds. You don't wear a two piece bathing suit. It's like, yeah, because I know what I can do, but I don't feel comfortable. I want to wear a one piece because I know what I could be, but I'm not there. And I'm not like putting in the effort to get there. And I mean, and I base a lot on, um, like, isn't it 70% of food, 30% gym or 80% food? It's like 90%. Yeah. Anyway, so I focus like on the food part when I do do it and it's such a bad habit. (laughs) I know. Well, I think the, the biggest thing that has changed for us, like our podcast is called, we only look thin. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we look like fit people. Like we're not, you know, supermodels, but we're definitely as, Mm -hmm. as, New people meet us and they don't know that we ever had a weight issue. They're like, oh, hey, you look like you just got back from a run. Like someone actually said that the other day. And that would not have been me five years ago. Like no Mm -hmm. one would accuse me of being out on a run. But I think body dysmorphia or just how comfortable you feel in your body isn't Mm -hmm. about number. It's about the direction you're going. It's Mm -hmm. like when I eat bad food over the weekend, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. When I eat well and my, when I when I eat healthfully and in, in, in a way that matches my goals, then I feel good. And whether I wear a, a two piece or a one piece is how I feel in the moment. It's yes. not yes. but it doesn't have, but people think it's about being a certain weight. And someone yeah. might say, What do you have to be sad about? You're this weight, or mm-hmm. like, gosh, Catherine, you've lost 150 pounds. Like, must be nice. You know, and it's like it's not over. It's I'm not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're not we're not fixed. I'm not like, locking in an I, interest rate. I'm still rate, the same like, person yeah. inside. You know, there was a uh, challenge on the Amazing Race in one of the early seasons where they ended up in Chicago, and um, the one of the the women could not eat two slices of deep dish pizza. And I was oh, like, I never I, saw that one. Oh my gosh, we were so mad. We I was like, to <laughs> I could letter. eat that entire deep dish pizza and then order another one. <laughs> 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 That was that was the only challenge you know, we could have. Uh, I, I am still that guy, like it. But mm-hmm. you know, it was. I, I don't think people talk enough about mindset when it comes to losing weight and yeah. getting over that all or nothing attitude has mm-hmm. been giant for me. I mean, it's it it isn't a be about being good or bad. It's just about making certain food choices and. Um, and planning for them. And I plan my indulgences now and I work them into my calories. I work them into my exercise plan. And I, it's just the way I'm living my life now. It's not about Mm -hmm. being all or nothing. It's about finding this happy medium to where I can still eat Snickers bars. Um, you know, but now I just have like two of the little ones, you know, instead of eating, you know, a couple of big full size ones, you know what I mean? but I do that on a routine basis. So I'm not feeling deprived, but right. I always make sure that it's within my calories. Well, mm-hmm. and I, th- I think too, as a couple, you're, you're engaged. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank uh-huh. you. <laughs> um, I think as a couple, I wanted to do what he wanted to do when we were younger. It was like, oh, well, you know, I want to make him a big meal because he's working more and food became kind of our, our, mm-hmm. Um, how we centered our relationship. Let's celebrate with food. Let's, you know, share a, a pint of Ben and Jerry's or three, you know, as you do. Cause oh, that's, my goodness. they're a yeah. small container. Who cares? <laughs> but, but, you know, I think in new relationships, there's like, if, if Donald was working out, I wanted to work out. And, or if he went mm-hmm. running, I would feel like that's what I would have to do. And you don't always match up on what your interests are, what your foods are. Donald's vegetarian. I'm not. And, and so, I'm vegetarian and he's I not. Oh, yeah. yeah. I eat a ton of meat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's all he eats. <laughs> but, but I think that there's like, there's a, you know, we have to eat the same thing. We have mm-hmm. to do this. Thing. We have to like match each other. And there are a lot of things like I need a lot of outer accountability. Like I do really well having an accountability group, having other people that Mm -hmm. I talk to about my situations. And Donald's very independent. He sets his mind to something like, 
hey, your leg's going to fall off. Great, I'm going to lose 100 pounds. <laughs> 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 But he, he's sort of a lone wolf and I'm much more of a social weight loss person. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's okay as a couple to look at your relationship with food differently, your activity differently. And it's great and, that and we, we almost never eat the same foods yeah. either. You know, we, we've just sort of settled into, you know, cooking partially because of me being a vegetarian. Um, we've just sort of settled into, you know, cooking our own f- food basically. Mm-hmm. So yeah. We're, we're not worrying about, you know, oh, what does the other one want today? What is the, you know, and especially with the calorie counting and everything, I think it's a lot easier for us just to do our own thing. And it's fine. You know, we just time it so that we're ready at the same time if I'm home for dinner um, with my job. But um, that makes it a lot easier too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's interesting. And I love, I'm, I'm a sucker for uh, success stories and inspirational mm-hmm. stories. And, and one well, of the... Came to the- right place. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the ones that I saw was, was this guy, he, he was like four or 500 pounds and people would say, just do something, just move. Right. And so every day he recorded himself. And the first thing he can do, cause he couldn't even stand up was shake. And so he would shake oh, wow. for X amount of minutes each day and eat less. And then he shook enough to where he could finally stand up and then sit wow. down and then stand up and sit down. And then it was actually doing more movements. And over the course of a year, so, I mean, now he's thin, he's a thin guy, you know, but it took him like years and years and years of what you guys are talking about, just falling in that vicious cycle. But literally the smallest thing, just shaking, like what yeah. <laughs> was his starting point? It all counts. And, and one of the sort of weird things about nature that I have found is that the more you weigh, the, the less you actually have to do in mm-hmm. order to burn calories. And yep. it's this thing, like I actually have to work a lot harder at this weight than I did a hundred pounds ago in order to lose things. You know, you were talking about people who lose five pounds in a week being unhealthy. Like I think one week, the entire time I was losing, I lost three pounds. And other than that, it was like a half a pound, three mm-hmm. quarters. Yeah. Yep. And it wasn't every week. It was just, I just consistently stuck with it. And anytime I got stuck for three weeks, I would change something. You know, mm-hmm. I would up size or lower the calories or whatever. But, um, you know, all that movement counts. Just, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's in a different place. And that guy, you know, just shaking as his exercise, you know, that's the place where he was in. And that's, you know, but you have to do it in a mindset of it being purposeful movement. I think. Yeah. Well, and I, I think too, I mean, I know growing up, I received messages and I'm sure you both did too, about what was acceptable in anything. Mm-hmm. You know, a successful person gets straight A's, a successful person, you know, um, works out this much time every day. You're never going to lose weight if you eat a pancake. You're never Mm going to lose weight if you don't get up early. Like if you don't have a green smoothie in the morning, like you might as well not even do anything. Like you get all these messages from, Mm -hmm. you know, armchair experts or even expert experts who think that their plan is the one way. And I think in this last time journey, the thing that I have found is I have a growth mindset now. What don't I know? What can I do better? Mm -hmm. Where am I limited? Where are we limited in our relationship? Like, how are we different? And how can we use those strengths, you know, our own strengths together? Mm -hmm. And knowing that I can make a plan and anyone out there listening can can see their life as it is and decide what are they, what, how are they ready to level up? What's the next thing that they're willing to do? Can you drink a glass of water? You can drink a glass of water. Can you walk to the mailbox? You can walk to the mailbox. Can you take a 10 minute walk after dinner as a couple? Sure. You can take a 10 minute walk. And it's, mm-hmm. it's adding things to your night, your life, not saying like, okay, shelter in place. All you can have is one hard boiled egg every five hours, okay. like until it, until you're fixed. And then you go back to the old method. And so it's been the last three years, three and a half years have just been like a, a rebirth in a way. Like, I feel like I'm who I was when I was 18. I feel like my, my energy level, my, um, my, my happiness, my joy, and my hope isn't what it was when I was just medicating with food. And it feels so much better in our relationship yeah. to be in a place where not only can we support one another, but having a podcast too. Like you guys, like you inspire other people in small ways who never thought that they could get something done. Being able mm-hmm. to show people like, hey, take the stairs at work. Donald does it every day. Like he doesn't go to a gym, but he works 14 hours a day and he can walk everywhere instead of mm-hmm. taking the golf cart. Like, and letting normal people know that you can do normal things and lose weight. It feels so amazing to be able to get that message out. 
if, and it's really good that you're saying like the little things like walk to the mailbox, because a lot of people's mindsets are, that's not going to do anything. But knowing that some people start with that is going to get their butts moving when they hear this. I feel like, you know, no, for sure. Yeah. Like, okay, let's do that. Um, and speaking of which now I want to transition. Wait one second. Oh, go ahead. Um, and I wanted to say too, losing weight, um, like for your diabetes, are you probably not on any medication or anything for it? Are you? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not anymore. I'm not uh, right because, like, yeah, it, it's awesome. it's crazy yeah, how the level down to normal. So yeah, exactly. So like, so many well, being a nurse and seeing so many people have you know medical issues, um, it's crazy how eating healthy, not even just like losing weight, but eating healthy and exercise can make them get off of like five medicines. Oh, yeah. As a philosopher once said, uh, food is the best medicine. Yeah. So anyways, that's cool that you don't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah, that's awesome. Heart medicines too, even before that. And Mm -hmm. uh, I I saw my heart doctor back in December and he's like, you know what? I don't need to see you anymore unless you have problems. Like, And he took me me off of everything I was on. Wow. And I, like as a wife, being in a position where we're not digging our own graves anymore, like we did for so long, like I'm getting choked up, like knowing that he was able to go off his medicine Mm -hmm. and he reversed his diabetes, which is, you know, for many people curable and people don't take the action and the steps that they need to get it done. Like, I'm just so like excited to be married to somebody who's my best friend, who also is like, we're in the best shape of our lives. I weigh what I weigh, what I weighed, I think in like sixth or seventh grade now. Wow. And it's crazy. And, and like, I'm in better shape. I mean, our daughter has to keep up with us. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She hates all the walking we make. Her do. <laughs> um, she's like, you're going to say something inspirational, aren't you? <laughs> She'll wake up and be like, you know, it's really cold outside. We should probably drive to school today. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> Um. All right. So perfect. Well, that yeah. that that's cool. And now we're gonna do. I don't know if you do. You guys do any of you guys speak Spanish? I hope not. Uh, uh, I do not. No, but I have been sadly. playing along with your. Uh, <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So we're gonna do the segment called the Spanish word of the day. So you're gonna help Nicole. Uh, actually, we're all just gonna do it yeah. together, right? So, uh, so the Spanish word of the day today is peso, p e s o, peso. Uh, is that the the currency peso or is it something else? <laughs> hey, I like that you said that because that is one definition. <laughs> okay. Peso can mean uh, like dollar. Oh, uh, gains? Does it mean gains? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're you're on the right track. Oh, diet? No, not diet. <laughs> I'm just doing you the moved, obvious. You moved away. You moved away, but oh, it has okay. to do with diet, I guess, in a sense. Peso. Oh, health, fitness. <laughs> Weight. Oh, <laughs> like a number. Like weight. 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 Oh, like, okay. uh, ¿cuánto tú pesas? How much do you weigh? Oh, or ah. el peso de algo, the weight of something. Oh. But it also can mean like the currency peso. You know. Oh, yeah. See, very we, nicely. I've done. lived in Los Angeles for over twenty years, and I sadly don't speak any Spanish. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure why I took French in high school, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I, uh, now, uh, speaking of weight and all that stuff, I just wanted to get, uh, like you guys said, just a little bit of tips on little things that you guys do, uh, Perfect. to keep the weight off. Uh, and I wanted to start with one of them, which, cause I feel like a majority of people out there walk around dehydrated, which is horrible for weight loss. Um, and just drinking the water that you need and exactly. Yeah. Yes. And we're sponsored by Essentia. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Essentia. Uh, but just drinking the amount of water that you need, you know, lowers your appetite and, and helps you burn calories as well. So that's one thing that I wanted to put out there because I just feel like... Well, Andy people... told me the cool thing they do about they dump out half their candy going to the movies. Oh, yeah. Don't you guys do like... Yeah, you... yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. So yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, so I, I was sort of raised with, you know, don't waste, don't waste, like clean mm-hmm. everything off. That's, your yeah, so that's how we are. Like if my if we leave anything on the plates, it's like disrespectful type thing. Like eat everything. Oh, Dave is the garbage disposal. <laughs> Nobody's going to eat it. <laughs> Dave will eat it. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, this was actually Catherine's idea. It was like, you know, there is value in not 
ingesting the calories. Right. You You pay a price for every choice, whether it's a financial choice or a caloric choice. So um, I went or we go to the movies and if I really want a candy bar, which are giant, like they're- Especially at the movies. They're they're usually, if you look at the package, it's like two and a half, uh, you know, uh, portions. Serving, yeah. One (laughs) one serving. So I actually will like cut the, the candy bar in half and I'll throw it in the trash before I can even think about it because there's no such thing as like, I'll save it for later. Right. Like, later, later is after the you know the trailers. Yeah, I'm the like, trailers right. end, and then you eat the other half. Right. <laughs> so, if I if I go and get like an indulgent muffin at Starbucks or something like that, I'll break it in half and throw it in the trash before I can think about it. Um, oh, wow. Or we've so like, and I eat. Speaking of plates, I eat off of salad plates only, not giant like mm-hmm. twelve inch. Nobody needs twelve inches of you know plate. <laughs> mm-hmm. You with your eyes before you actually eat and you know seeing your food on a much smaller plate psychologically it feels like you're getting a lot more food and mm-hmm. i know that that may seem crazy but it actually does work yeah and going like you mentioned going to a, a chinese restaurant if you look at the calorie counts on a lot of chain restaurants have their calories posted it is so sobering before you go in like if if you don't pay attention go yeah oh, let's get an appetizer let's get a dessert let's mm-hmm. get an entree like you're out the door at 3000 calories easy yeah. for all of that. And if you look in advance, like, oh, I'm going to get the the healthy, you know, it says like the crispy cucumber shrimp melon dish. I'm like, oh, that sounds very helpful. And it ends up being 1700 calories. And mm-hmm. that's my, my daily goal. Like it is <laughs> very sobering to make, it's like making a budget. Mm-hmm. You have a budget for your money. You have a budget for your calories. And are you willing to pay that price? You know, one day is is one thing. One meal is one thing. But when like us, we used to get takeout three or four times a week and go to lunch every day and get free food at work. Like, yeah, for sure. It's uh, so being mindful in advance. I think is is one of the critical steps. And and do you guys do you guys do are you guys just consistent? So like you'll say, oh, you know, I had a little bad thing today, but that's in my calories. And, and then you know you have everything else that you're gonna have that's healthy or whatever. Or, or or do you also have like a cheat day? You know, like, like on the weekend, like on a Saturday, a holiday or something. Yeah, we have well, big feelings about cheat days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't uh, ever call it a cheat day, um, but I will. You know, if I know there's a, a special event coming, I will. Uh, plan for it. And it's not so much that I'll, I'll change anything I'm doing uh, as that I'll just be like, you have to live your life. And people, you know, visitors come to town and holidays happen. And, you know, I will, I will have that one meal and then I will immediately move on and, it, and go right back to my habits. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just that sort of, you know, we were talking about the all or nothing mentality. I used to, you know, I would have that one meal and then I'd be like, well, I guess I've blown all the progress I've made over the last year. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's wait for whatever Labor Day. I want from now on. Well, and I think, I think too, it's never the event that's the issue. No one, I didn't get to 300 pounds because I went to the Cheesecake Factory once. Mm-hmm. I went, I, I gained up to 300 pounds because it was every other day. And now we're in a position where if we have, we call it an indulgence because mm-hmm. like, you cheat on a test, you cheat on your taxes, like the hamburger steals food, he cheats. But like cheating a cheat day, it's just your life day. It's not like, I don't, I, I think the language there is important for, at least for me, because you're not being bad or I think it leads to secret eating, which is something that I used to do. Like if you see food as being good or bad, it's just yeah. food. It's food like Michael Phelps can eat thirty pizzas. It doesn't make him a bad guy. He just burns it off. Like, yeah, um, I might be exaggerating the quantity, but, <laughs> but it's no, it's, no, no, thirty. That's it's, never, it's never, <laughs> it's never Memorial Day. That's the problem. It's the day after. It's the plan you have in place, mm-hmm. or when you get back from vacation. Is your refrigerator stocked with healthy foods, or is it empty so you get takeout? Do you have, you know, healthful food choices at the ready right in front of you? Or do you have chips on the counter? It's the plan after the day now. I just see it as like a holistic, we've got to figure out our lives and we pay a a price for every choice. We pay a price for sleeping in and not walking in the morning. We pay a price for choosing, you know, the the Trenta uh, sweet beverage, you know, Mm -hmm. coffee beverage instead of the tall. All of that matters. And you know, creating a path for yourself that includes indulgences and real life. I used to shelter in place. Like I was doing this cabbage soup diet back in the day, which 
you know, like you eat eight tomato, cherry tomatoes at 10 a.m. And then mm-hmm. you have one ounce of steak and then you have, you know, cabbage soup, which was terrible. But I would not go out to see friends because I was like, I have to do the diet and I, can't, I have yeah. to comply and I can't go out. And knowing like, we've got a vacation coming up in, you know, 60 days. We've got to figure out how to make it happen and stick to our goals so we don't feel terrible. And knowing that like life is going to happen. It's not just this carpet rolls out and it's like, everything's perfect. Our families are perfect. Our jobs are perfect. Like the weather's always great. Like everything is lined up in our path to make a perfect weight loss uh, event for us. We're losing weight despite crisis and chaos mm-hmm. and long work hours and beignet trucks showing up to his yeah. office. Like <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have to fight for your health despite all of those distractions, despite the Sunday meals with your families and enjoy it, but know that those are going to come your way. And it's, it's just part of creating a happy life for yourself. So. Yeah. yeah and I, I got taken out to lunch twice last week, which is very unusual. I almost never eat, you know, off the catering truck. I, I bring my own food, but I got taken out twice and I, I just, my plan was I would eat a a relatively sensible lunch, even though it was going to be way over the calories that I would normally eat. And then the rest of the day, I would just stick to my plan. And that's what I did. And and that's just sort of how I deal with those things now. Yeah. And that's awesome. I mean, because like the old, you would probably be like, well, I screwed up at lunch. So I'm going to have pizza for dinner. Cause that's, (laughs) that's what I do. Like, oh, I had Chinese for lunch. I'll have pizza for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) It would be pizza for dinner, and then it would be all of the candy I could get my hands on, mm-hmm. and then it, you know, and it would just it wouldn't stop, you know, for the rest of well, the day. And we were codependent, and, and the week, and the month, and the year. We were yeah. codependent. So I'd be like, "Hey, do you feel like getting takeout?" Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you feel like getting takeout? <laughs> yeah. And now, if like one of us does a sideways glance, like, "Hey, do you want to?" You know, it's like, "No, I don't." No. Because- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I, we've we've sort of, and and I'm not an expert on codependency, but we've we've sort of turned our behaviors, our codependency, around in a positive way, if that's even possible. And mm-hmm. you know, it's sort of, we we watch each other now in a sense, and and I think we try and inspire each other to to healthy behaviors instead of to negative behaviors. Yeah. And you know, if I if I decide to get on our rebounder, which is a little trampolines that we have that we bounce on for exercise, you know, if I decide to get on it, then oftentimes it, you know, pushes her to get on it and vice versa. Yeah. And I think on a final note, like Don being very independent and being driven on his own, like I said, I need accountability. Finding people, you might have, uh, you know, someone in your life who's super fit, who can eat whatever they want and don't have to worry about it. I have to live my life for myself, not for the people around me. Just because a colleague can eat, you know, an entire 12 inch sub and not gain weight doesn't mean that I, you know, I don't, there's not, you know, some golden ticket. It's like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And finding people who support your needs, whether it's an online community or a podcast or a community in your neighborhood, if you need out, you know, external support, Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be just in your four walls. If your kids can eat whatever they want, that's great. It doesn't mean that you can do that too. Right. And so I, I think it's been great for Donald and I to see that there are so many ways to get health done. And it doesn't, we don't have to conform and do the same things. And, but we can support each other in our own ways too. Um, and I think it's just made our, our marriage stronger. And we're, we're definitely, uh, I think we're in amazing race shape now. <laughs> yeah, you guys are. What a great, you guys definitely need to apply. Yeah, you guys should apply. What a great, great story. story. They'll and, love it. And like the before and afters and like say, oh, now we can run the race. You and know, then you'll be passing up the young couple and being like, see, <laughs> passing <Yeah>. us up. <laughs> We actually did apply when we were both a lot heavier than this a long time ago, one time, but uh, we never got called. So yeah, but well, I, be cool for them to compare the tapes though and be like, "Hey, we applied once. This is us now." Yeah, that, I'd say go for oh, it. Oh, one hundred. We would root for you. We would root for you for sure. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for for being on this show yeah. uh, on our show. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. And you guys are super inspirational. So if anybody ever wants to get some great insight, mm-hmm. uh, tell them where they can find you, the name of your podcast and your, and your socials. 
Uh, well, the, the name of the podcast is We Only Look Thin, um, and you can find us at weonlylookthin.com and uh, also on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at We Only Look Thin. Yeah, or uh, you can email us at weonlylookthin at gmail.com. Uh, we're active on Instagram and uh, Facebook. We've got a Facebook community. so And you can subscribe to our podcast anywhere you find podcasts. We're, uh, we're on Stitcher and, and all those things. Awesome. 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 Well, again, thank you guys so much. Yes, really appreciate you. Uh, you coming on with us. And this was a great... So and I'm inspired. I, I'm going to get my button gear now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say really quickly, my mother was a nurse for 40 years and wow. I really admire the profession and I really appreciate that that's what you're dedicating your life to. Nurses are the unsung heroes of the medical world. Thanks. Yeah, we do do quite a bit that people <laughs> don't know about. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, you have a good day. Uh, we appreciate you. Yes. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thank you, you so much. Thanks for having Bye. us. We really hope you enjoyed the conversation with Catherine and Donald. Such a fun couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a good time with a them. A lot of insight. Yeah, a lot of insight. A lot of good advice for everybody out there. Um, and don't forget to go head over to their podcast and listen. We only look thin. Uh, so anyways... Now we're going to go into the weird or normal segment. Okay. And this is something that Nicole gives me flack about all the time. And I think it's so normal and she thinks it's so weird. And then sometimes she'll argue with me because I'll do this on one of her things, right? So Uh the parking brake. Oh, yeah. That's really weird. That is not weird. So I, every time I park my car, I put on the emergency brake. You know, the little lever. You're the only person I know who does that. That is not, that should be something that everybody does. And I think, so this is my. No, you do it when we pull into the gas station. You do it everywhere. Yeah. It's a good habit to have. That way your car doesn't roll. What if, what if your normal. Does your car roll? So it does. Because it's a stick shift. Because it's a stick shift. So I put it, but it's like any other vehicle though. I put it in first gear, right? So when you go to turn off a, 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 if, if people that don't know. In a stick shift vehicle, if you just leave it in neutral and turn it off, like it'll shut off, but it can roll. No, I put mine in park and then exactly. shut it off. I know. You put it in park on your car, yes. but I put it in first gear in my car Why? and then I can turn it off because that'll stop park? it from rolling. Do you have a park? No, there's no park. There's one, two, three, four, oh, five, so first reverse. first gear is your park? First gear, yeah, but I can't just... If I if I just put my car in first gear and I let go of like the clutch, it'll mm-hmm. jerk forward and it'll shut off. Oh, okay. Right. So you have to put it in first gear, hold the clutch, turn it off, but then that'll leave the car in like a stop position, almost like a parked, mm-hmm. right? And then I put the emergency brake so it just for sure doesn't roll. I don't know. I think the emergency brake is used for emergencies or if you're parked on top of a hill or I think you using your emergency brake every single day, multiple times a day. Is making it not work. It It's not, okay, but there's a difference between me driving down the street and pulling the brake and actually wearing it down to where the car is just completely stopped and I'm just locking it in place. Okay, I don't know how emergency brake works <laughs> when it's parked, but I just, the way you pull up on that thing so hard. I just, it's cranks. just habit. I, I par, I, like I, it, it's all in one motion. I can't even explain what I do, but everything just happens at once. Clutch, you know, I got the clutch down, car turns off, and then, you know, the yeah. brake goes up and I'm out of the car. It's all yeah. it happens in a matter of seconds. Your car will will not be going anywhere. No, and that's a good thing because what if... That is a good thing. Let's just say what if you put your car in park, right? You put your car in park and for some reason it's just not in park. I don't even right? know where the emergency brake is on my car. And yours, it's not... You don't you have... You pull down below. Yeah, you don't pull. You, you push it with your foot. Mm. Yours is the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. on the left side and you push it with your foot. Um, a lot of cars now, the newer ones, it's just the button, the parking brake. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. And so you, they'll have a little button on the dash or something. Uh, but yeah, all the other old school cars have the lever on it. But I think it's a good habit because you just never know. What if you go to put your car in park and something's wrong? And so now it's actually like in a neutral state and it can roll, right? I don't, yeah, I don't know. We're just different about it. I don't think my car is going to roll. So if I was on a hill or something, it's like, you might as well as go get bricks and put them behind all four of your tires. <laughs> That's extreme. I will say this. The only, only, there was another time where there was somebody that didn't agree with what I thought. 
And it was because I drove their car, right? Mm-hmm. I drove their car and I stopped and I put the brake, whatever. And then when we left wherever we were going, they turned on their car and they drove. And then when we got to their house, we all got out and we're all like, what's burning? Something mm-hmm. smells burnt. They drove the entire way with the parking brake yeah. on. <laughs> you don't do that to my car, do you? No, I don't. Because okay. I know you don't like it because we've had that conversation before. Because that would, would happen and then it'd be a couple hundred dollar fix. Yeah, my buddy, he was not happy. He was not. He was like, why did you do that to my car? And I'm like, dude, it's a parking brake. Who taught break. you to do that? My dad. Mm. This is normal. This is normal. Especially... My dad's a big car guy. Like he knows that he's, he changes all the oil, he fixes the belt, so he takes off tires. No, I get, okay, but he's never mentioned to me. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that, I don't know, I've never been taught that. My dad is picky. I mean, you know how picky my dad yes, is. Yes, he is. He's checking the oil every two days. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know. Okay. We will uh, respectfully agree to disagree. Yeah, does anyone else pull their parking emergency <laughs> parking brake every time they park? And I'm not just saying once a day, like every time. Yeah. Let I me mean, know. I think it's better to be safe than sorry. Do you sorry. know anybody else that does it? Um, I don't pay attention to everybody's driving habits, so oh, okay. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I no idea, but... Okay. That was a good one. That was a good one. I, you know, I, I try. I try. You are weird on this one. I, I will. It's about time that you're weird. I will venture to say that more people don't than do, mm-hmm. but in that case, I'm just being safe about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially since I do have a stick shift. Yeah. I'll venture to say that people that have stick shift vehicles will do it more. Yeah, maybe if I had a stick shift, there's I would. more. There's more likely of a chance that you'll do it if you have a stick shift vehicle. I, without a doubt, hundred percent. Right. Right. Um, but but your buddy is who you burned up was his stick shift? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was no bueno no happy. Um, okay, now and to close this out pretty much, we are down to our favorite part or one of our favorite parts because mm-hmm. we have a lot of favorite parts in doing this. And it's reading the reviews from you guys, our loyal listeners, because you guys are what drives us. And I feel like I'm regurgitating every time I say this, but it's true. And I only say it because it's true. And if not, we wouldn't even read these, right? right. Yeah, yeah. So we, we really appreciate you guys. Keep leaving us reviews because we'll keep reading them and it really drives us. Take it away, Nicole. Okay, this one's from Noah Turk. It's called Best Podcast and Best People. I picked this one too, by the way, <laughs> but I screenshotted two of them because I felt that you were, you, you were going to pick one of these. So go ahead. Uh, five stars. I love the podcast so much in the way that Nick and Vic kept the conversation flowing, keep the conversation flowing with their guests and themselves is truly something special. They have such a good talent for this and they really make it seem like you're in the room with them, which is amazing. You guys are so amazing and funny and you have really helped me stay happy through some tough times. Can't wait for the next episode, Noah. Thanks so much, Noah. That's super sweet. We both picked it. So obviously it's a good one. We're always here to make you smile. Don't worry. We might fail you sometimes. Yeah, this episode might not. (laughs) Um, Anyway, this one is from Alexandra. Uh, A smile needed. Five stars. I love this podcast. Been listening since episode one. I'm currently on the bus ride back to college in Connecticut after visiting my boyfriend in Pennsylvania over break. Saying goodbye again is super hard, but I saved this week's episode just for this ride. I knew I would need something to cheer me up, and it sure did. Aww. Every interview is interesting and with wholesome, organic comedy. Thank you guys for helping in more ways than you know. Hashtag, hashtag team mismatch socks. Hashtag don't have time for laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you guys so, so much. Uh, you can listen to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts currently right now. Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. Also, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And the easiest way to do that is on the little purple app on your phone, the Apple Podcast app. Mm-hmm. You can always listen at www.cococalientepodcast.com. And you can also check out our merchandise. We just got our new mugs in. We haven't released them yet. But the logo is awesome and Mm -hmm. you'll really like it. Um, And yeah, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Coco Caliente Pod. Uh, Podcast. I get Twitter and Instagram mixed up sometimes. Twitter is Coco Caliente Pod and then Instagram is Coco Caliente Podcast. Boom. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. (laughs) 